and it's also got a considerable extent of open water around it, the North Atlantic. But the Arctic Ocean, which is here, which would be the body of water, which would supply the precipitation for the glaciation of North America and Europe, that ocean is frozen. And there is, it seems, a not a sufficient body of open water for there to be a supply, a sufficient supply of precipitation in the form of snow to build up glaciers in northern Europe and northern Canada at the present time. It's quite cold enough. Anybody who's worked or lived in the Arctic will know that. But there isn't sufficient snow, and that seems to be because the Arctic Ocean is frozen over. Then why did we get a glaciation, or periods of glaciation, at least four, during the last two million years? Well, it may be because the Arctic Ocean was then open. And the reason that the Arctic Ocean was opened, in other words, melted, may be because the link between South America, let me just get this stable, the link between South America and North America, this connection of Central America, only arose due to volcanic activity about three, maybe three and a half million years ago. And the effect of that was to drive warm water from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up the Atlantic into the North Atlantic to warm the British Isles and to possibly melt the ice of Antarctica. So the initiation of the Ice Age of two million years ago in the Northern Hemisphere, our and Europe's ice age may have to do with the, f the distribution of ocean currents caused by a change in the pattern of land masses, caused by a change in the link between North America and South America. So ocean currents, the position of continents relative to open water is probably the key to glaciation. Now why did the glaciers retreat? Well, after the Arctic Ocean was opened, a considerable amount of snow fell in North America. That snow would reflect the sun's heat. The climate became very cold, and initially that helped the, the glaciers expand, expand beyond the Canadian border into, North, into the United States, for example. But once it became so cold that the oceans became cold, then the Arctic Ocean froze over again. And what happened then? Then when the Arctic Ocean froze over, no open water, not sufficient snow, melted during the summer, the glaciers retreated. So that's just a theory. It may not be correct. But it gives us a hint that what is necessary for glaciation to occur is that we need a cold body of open water toward the north or the south, in other words, in a high latitude, and we need the land mass to be in a high latitude. So continental drift, the movement of continents toward the north, toward the south poles, an open body of water close to them are probably the conditions we need for glaciation. And it seems that we are going to suffer recurrent glaciations until continental drift moves the continents around again. Now, one of the effects of the last glaciation was, of course, to drive animals and plants out of their normal habitats. We often think of the mammoths, for example, the mammoths of North America. From one of them, about 15,000 years ago, came this rather beautiful tusk. We think of them being um, <clears throat> suffering extinction because of the advance of the ice. In fact, that was not the case. The mammoths and the other beasts of the Ice Age survived all the advances of the ice, but what they didn't survive was they didn't survive the coming of man, man as a hunter. The mammoth which lost that tusk might have seen sites similar to this in North America 12 to 15,000 years ago. In fact, however, this is the coast of Antarctica at the present day. The rock of most of the continent 
is depressed by the weight of ice below sea level. But mountains along the coast jut out spectacularly, just as they do along the coast of Greenland. Much of our understanding of how ice sheets grow and melt back will come from the study of the Antarctic ice sheet, and in fact already has come from the Antarctic ice sheet. It's hardly more than 65 years since the expedition of Captain Scott made their heroic attempt to reach the South Pole, the last three survivors dying not 20 miles from safety on the return from the Pole. That expedition pioneered the scientific work now done in the Arctic. Scott's camp still stands remarkably well preserved. The contents of the tins are still edible, and everything of Scott and his companions is still as they left it in 1911, refrigerated by the extreme climate. The scientific work they began has been continued by international cooperation of a remarkable extent. There are still no territories in the Antarctic claimed like countries were in the New World by imperialists from Europe. The territory is still divided um, according to investigative territories. It's difficult to imagine Ontario covered by a mile of ice. But it did happen about, oh, 20,000 years ago. And it may indeed happen again. And if it does happen again, uh, we may not be able to stop it. But at least by that time, geologists and climatologists might have learnt enough to understand why it's happened.